Hey everyone, it's Gary here from Echidna Sewing and uh, today I'm so excited to be standing here in front of the all new Brother Stell Air Series 2 sewing and embroidery machines. In this video we're going to be focusing on the Stellar XJ2 sewing and embroidery machine combo and in particular we're going to take a good look at the sewing functionality including the new features over and above what the Stellar XJ1 had. If you'd like to have a good look at the embroidery machine side of it then click on the little link and that'll take you to the XE2 which is the embroidery only machine and all the embroidery features on that model will be the same as they are on the sewing and embroidery machine. First of all, we should take a look at what comes standard with the XJ2. So I'm going to go through all those, those bits at the, at the moment. So uh, imagine you're opening the box for the first time. This is what you're going to dig out of the box. First of all, let's grab all the hoops. So the XJ2 comes standard with four hoops uh, included in the package. And that will include the, um, the 100 by 100, which is uh, great for your left chest logos and, and any of your smaller designs. And remember, when you're embroidering, always use the smallest hoop you can for the job at hand. There's the, X, uh, the next hoop is the 5x7 or the 130 by 180 So that's standard in the box. Then you've got the 240 by 240 or in other words, nine and a half inches by nine and a half inches in the old, old scale. And uh, again, standard in the box. And of course, the one that everybody loves, the big, big 360 by 240 frame. So that's your uh, nine and a half inches by 14 inches. So those four hoops are standard with the XJ2 come in the box with the machine. Obviously, other things you would expect to get is a fantastic operation manual. So. Uh, brother, do write a great manual, and this is full of all the details that you would need to know if you want to. However, these machines are so user-friendly that it's more often than not you don't need to be digging through the manual very often, but it is always handy to have. Uh, you'll also get the, um, the design guide. So this has got this is the Disney design guide, all the different Disney designs built in there with all the color sequencing and everything, and uh, that's standard. A quick reference guide. Uh, these are more useful for... Uh, for a lot of people because they are just a like getting started really quickly guide so that's kind of handy um, other cool things you've got your ability to design your own stitches in this machine so these are little templates with the um, my custom stitch which is standard bit of information about the brother design database transfer because you can this is a wi-fi machine so you can send designs directly to the machine from the brother design database transfer software uh, you get a whole heap of the little um, snowman or design placement stickers uh, they're for embroidery, so we'll go through those on the XE2. And um, a couple of uh, sheets that are, are basically for calibrating the screens, etc. That's because these are such a clever machine, so um, a recalibration every now and then just helps. And of course, an accessory guide. So um, Brother have a whole heap of accessories. And one of the great things about uh, Brother is that their, their presser feet are very, very reasonably priced, so affordable, and there are so many different accessories available. So that is also included in the box, which is kind of handy. Um, what else do you get? Obviously, there is a foot control, your standard foot control with the XJ2. That obviously doesn't come with the XE1, the embroidery version, because you don't need a foot control with that machine. Um, you do also get the Move It Digital Dual Foot which uh, is incredible. We're gonna have a, a, a bit of a closer look at that in a few moments. It does also come with the uh, twin spool stand, the thread stand. So that actually clips onto the machine. That makes it so much easier to use bigger spools, um, and commercial size spools, etc. And uh, that is included in the box. Well, what else have we got here? Of course, there is a fantastic little accessory tray here. I do love this. This is um, a really nice way to, uh, to store all the different feet and we just simply Slide that across, that comes up, and these little trays come out. So you've got loads of accessories in there. I'm not going to go through every one of them because they are listed on the brochure, but needless to say, there's a good range of presser feet. And uh, what's really nice about these little trays is that um, the feet themselves, if I just take that spare bobbin case out, 
they don't fall out. So if you do happen to tip it up, they, they sort of lock into position. But you've got buttonhole feet, overlocking feet, zipper feet, uh, your applique uh, feet, and um, uh, just a whole variety of, of, uh, of exceptionally good quality presser feet. And a spare bobbin case. So this machine does come with a bobbin case for sewing and embroidery. This is the sewing bobbin case I have in my hand at the moment. And I know that because it doesn't have a dot right in the middle there. And when I change this over, as I will do in a few moments, you'll see the difference and just how easy it is to change your bobbin case. So we're gonna leave that out anyway. Uh, also, the great little brother um, multi-purpose screwdriver, and that's going to make a lot of sense in a few moments as to why that, that screwdriver is so good. And that has three positions, so you can actually use that for various parts of uh, on the machine. Um, and there's also the embroidery foot here. So if you've got, if you're converting over to embroidery, uh, this is the foot you would put on. And of course, another little bag of goodies, a pair of scissors, uh, more screwdrivers, uh, extra needles, spare needles, um, straight stitch foots in there. Um, just a few other bits and pieces that again, we don't need to go into right at this very minute. All your spare bobbins will also be in here. And I think we also get some bobbin clips for securing your bobbins and stopping them from unraveling on you. We'll pop those back in there. I don't need any of that at the moment. And what's good is that just, whoops, pop that little foam bit back in there. When this is put back into position and locked into place, when you're storing your machine, this is designed to fit just in the throat of the machine there like that. So that's nicely thought of too. So you know what it's like when you're storing things. Not that I expect you'll ever be putting this away because you'll be using it all the time. But if you do have to, it does store really, really nicely. We've got the couching foot um, or the couching device. So this is new on the, as a standard feature on the XJ2 and the X, XE2. Um, and it's for, for couching. And uh, we're gonna show you that in the embroidery mode because there are built-in couching designs. The XJ2 will also come with a straight stitch needle plate. And um, that means if you, uh, if you really want that precise straight stitching, uh, maybe you're a quilter or just really, really do like that precision on straight stitching, then that plate will actually help you there as well. We also have the knee lever. So if you are right into, uh, you know, right into doing a lot of sewing and you like to control the, the lift of the presser foot with your knee, that lever simply plugs into the hole down here. Obviously I can't quite fit it on this, this bench as I'm sitting here at the moment, but that's standard in the box as well. And last but not least, I'll just quickly show you the embroidery unit. Now, this uh, obviously comes with the XJ2, but that is the embroidery unit. It simply plugs on and we'll, um, we'll show you that when we set up the XE2. So remember to have a good look at the embroidery functionality, have a look at the video for the XE2, which is exactly the same machine, but without sewing functions. Hope that makes sense. Okay, let's have a closer look at some other features. Firstly, the machine is a different color to the previous model. So we've now got on the XJ2, we've now got this lovely, this gray. It's a really elegant looking machine, to be honest. And um, I think that's important. You really want to feel comfortable when you're sitting in front of your machine. Um, it's very accommodating. So needle to arm length, you've got 11 and a quarter inches. So that's that's pretty big. That's, that's getting on close to 30 centimeters. Um, and then that's, that's a very accommodating machine. Five inches tall here, so that's uh, near 125 millimeters or 12.5 centimeters. Um, so really accommodating machine. If you're a quilter, you'll love the space that this machine gives you. I will also point out that the attachment here that comes off, obviously we remove that when we're converting to embroidery, but this has um, a wonderful uh, storage capacity. So when this opens out, you've got all sorts of storage capacity, both front and back and that just folds up. We're gonna leave that in here for the time being because we are just in sewing mode. Pop that back into that uh, there. You've got a big screen. So this is uh, 10 and 10 point something inches. It's a, it's a large screen. It's a beautiful clear screen. I'm not gonna to touch it yet. We're in screen saver mode. We'll get to the screen very shortly. Um, another thing I love this about Brother Machines is that the buttons are all big and they're clearly um, labeled and they're easy to get to. You don't have to sort of, you know, get your head on a different angle to see them and um, nice and functional and all makes sense. When we lift this uh, lid here, we now expose the threading area. Everything's got diagrams on how to thread the bobbin, how to wind the bobbin, how to thread the machine. The thread spool is very accessible at the front here. And obviously it's a lay down spool system. So you can use your cones and, and cops and all sorts of types of threads. You also have a twin needle spool pin just here. And um, 
Bob Winder is, is just here. We're going to wind a bobbin in a few moments. One of the great things that it is standard on these machines is it does come with the, um, as I mentioned before, the uh, twin, the twin spool pin. And that allows you to use the bigger spools of thread. And you know what? Pretty much whenever you can, if you can use this type of uh, spool system, you're going to get a better delivery of thread. There's less likelihood of the thread sort of getting caught in the, the little tiny well areas on the machine. So I'm going to um, put that on the machine right now. So I'm, to do that, you just simply pull the cover straight off like that. It's really, really simple. And we'll just put that out the back there. And now all I need to do is take my twin needle spool holder and I'll just find my position right there. There it is, it just locks into place and then I can lift this guy up and now I can run pretty much any spool of thread that I particularly want to. First thing that I'm going to do though now is um, remove the needle plate and change to the sewing bobbin case. And this is one of the nice new features on the XJ2 or the XE2 is it has a one touch needle plate now. So um, previous, and, and really it's one of the only differences um, to the uh, the previous models after they've had the upgrade applied. Uh, they'll, they'll also be the same as this model, but they, they won't have this one touch needle plate because this is a physical change in the machine. So if I lift the presser foot now and taking my little brother screwdriver, which has multiple positions, if I put it into position number two, I can in fact just pop it into this little slot here and then just click it up and the plate will now simply slide off. And that's how easy it is to get the needle plate. There's no screws to undo at all. And changing the bobbin case is very, very simple. It's um, quite exposed there, you can see it now. And all I've got to do is lift that out. Now this is the embroidery bobbin case because it has that little sort of purple dot in the center. And you'll notice it doesn't have any um, green paint or green uh, uh, lock, locking paint on the screw there. It's, it's totally um, available to be adjusted, whereas the sewing bobbin case, that is covered in the, the little green um, paint there, and there's no, no um, dot in the center there. So this is for sewing. All we've got to do is align the little arrow with the dot, and we just pop that in. I'll try and keep my hands out the way. It's always difficult trying to get in the right position in front of the camera, but that is now in position. So we've now changed the bobbin case over. So as you can see, really simple for taking the plate off and cleaning the machine because that's something you know you do have to do with, with uh, sewing machines and embroidery machines. And popping the new plate back on, it is just a matter of shooting it back under the foot there, sliding it into place and pushing it down. And that's it. Super, super easy. So what's next? All right, now we're gonna take a good close look at uh, how easy it is to wind the bobbin and thread the machine because let's face it, that's something you're gonna do all the time. So. Winding the bobbin is super easy on these machines. Now, because I've put the, uh, the twin spool thread holder on the machine, I'm going to use this because that's just going to give you better thread delivery. That's what it's designed for. So I'm just going to take this spool, which is a, a mini cone, and um, quite honestly, that's a very efficient way to buy thread these days. And we're just going to pop that up on here. It doesn't matter which side we go to. You don't need to put a spool cap on when you're using the vertical holder here. And we just simply Pull that thread over there. And winding the bobbin, you'll see on the top here, there's a dotted line. You've just got to follow the dotted line. It's really, really simple. So all we need to do is come down into this position here, which is number two. And then we follow that dotted line. It goes around the little tensioning device here. And then we come across to the bobbin. Now, we're going to get a good close up of this because this is what really is so magical on this particular machine. Now, I have loaded the, uh, an A-style bobbin. It's a very standard A-style bobbin on these. You'll get them anywhere. We pop that into position. Just wrap the thread around that bobbin about six or seven times I usually go. And there's a tiny, I'll get my stylus and point to this. There's a tiny little groove just here where you can actually just tuck that thread into. And I'll just put that down there so you can see. I've tucked the thread into that little groove there. And now if I pull on it, it will cut it off. And that holds the thread nice and taut. So when we engage the bobbin winder, the screen actually gives you a start button. So that is the start button for winding the bobbin. And at that point, you can also set the speed. And a little tip I give everyone is wind your bobbin at sort of mid speed. Um, because that uh, just ensures a good smooth wind. And um, the faster you go, like anything, the more 
tolerances or the less tolerance you have and you know something goes a bit pear-shaped as the thread's coming off the spool um, you've got you've got time to certainly stop the machine but uh, set it at um, in the center point there and hit the start button and that will wind the bob and the other thing by winding at full speed is you can exert a little bit more tension and pressure on the thread and that can stretch the thread a little bit depending on what thread you're using and give you a, sometimes a, a less than um, a less than good wind on your bobbin and it's important to wind your bobbin well to ensure smooth stitching. Now of course as it fills it will push this little um, engagement uh, thing here and it'll push it out and it will actually stop the machine from winding. But if I wanted to stop I could also just hit the stop button here. Sometimes you don't need to wind a full, a full bobbin and um, you just hit that stop button and that will, that will work for you. But that has filled it and I'm happy with that. Now when you take that thread off you can pick up a pair of scissors and cut it if you like or you can utilize that little tiny blade that's just there and it cuts it for you. So that's as easy as it is to wind the bobbin. If I was winding a bobbin from down here, I would just follow the, um, the dotted lines again. So my thread would come across into number one here, then come across to number two, and then back around and across like that. It's really, really simple. Just follow, follow the dots. That's as easy as it is. Okay, bobbin wound. Let's have a look at how we would insert this into the machine. So, um, We've switched the machine on, we've touched the panel, we've wound a bobbin. I'm going to lift my presser foot and you do have a foot lift button just here. So we just lift that up and that gives us a nice high lift on the foot. I could also use my lever at the back of the machine if I want, but I didn't need to. So loading the bobbin, it's just a matter of clicking that little black cover off. And you'll notice there's a little indicator here that shows just exactly how the bobbin should be set into the machine. It is, it comes off in an anti-clockwise direction. So we just simply drop the bobbin in there and you've got a little slot just here. You just grab that thread, pull it around and then cut it off and that's it. You don't need to draw the bobbin thread and um, that's magic. That's as easy as it is to load the bobbin. Okay, so threading the bobbin was easy but threading the needle is even easier and all you need to do is we're going to take the thread from out of the, the little bobbin um, tension that I've got there. And when I'm using this vertical spool uh, holder, I just usually bring my thread into number two here anyway, because it just keeps it nice and neat and tidy. But um, we simply pull it over and follow the solid line now. So there is a solid line and a dotted line. The solid lines for needle threading, the dotted lines for bobbin threading. If my thread was sitting in the little well here, it would come straight across into number one position. But in this case, I'm coming from here across to number one position just here and I just follow it around. Now you should always make sure your presser foot is in the up position and one of the nice things on these machines is it won't let you thread the machine if the presser foot's down. So that's good because that's a big fault on a lot of machines. You, if you thread the machine with the presser foot down you could run into some problems. So presser foot is up and that will allow us to thread the machine. We just follow the, the, the solid line. So there's one, that's two, three is down here, four is up into the take-up lever, now the take-up lever is sitting right here. You've got to make sure the thread's in there and um, it's pretty hard to miss it. Then number five is down the slot there. Number six is on the needle bar right here. Number seven is over here. So you just take the thread up to number seven and then there's a little cutter on the side here. You just pull that off and cut it. And here's the magic. Blink and you'll miss it. All we've got to do is push the needle threader button and Presto, the needle is threaded, ready to go. How easy is that? Now we're going to have a good look at the screen and um, all the, the crazy good built-in features on this machine, or as many as we can within the time constraints we have. But you'll notice in our once we've um, touched the, uh, the screen saver, uh, on this model, the XJ2, you've got four different menus. You've got Sewing, Embroidery, Disney, and My Design Center. So again, uh, Embroidery, Disney, and My Design Center will be um, all explained in the XE2 video. So do watch that one to, to check out those features. Um, and if we are looking at sewing functions though, all we've got to do is touch the sewing function button and up comes our, our main menu. And um, before we dig into that, I will mention that this machine actually has 760 built-in uh, decorative stitches. It has uh, tapering stitches. It has um, Oh, uh, Sashiko stitches, it has un, uh, My Custom Stitch, which allows you to design your own stitches. So it really is quite in depth, but 
the, the best thing about this is the, the quality of the screen, the quality of the layout and the interface. It's just really, really easy. And as we, as we scroll through this screen, we'll come across the top here first. This little Wi-Fi button, yeah, this is a Wi-Fi machine. We mentioned that earlier. If I touch that button, that will take me into my Wi-Fi settings. And I'm currently set up on our Echidna uh, Wi-Fi guest signal here. And you will just set the machine up on your local Wi-Fi network. And um, that'll allow you to use the apps that I'll talk about in a, in a few moments. And um, also... Um, send designs to the machine in embroidery mode, all, all sorts of wonderful features there. So setting up your Wi-Fi network's very, very easy. And once we've done that, we'll just go okay to that um, and come back across here. This little button here lets you get into all your settings on the machines. Now, one of the things about automation is it's wonderful and, and you know, generally speaking, just let the machine do its thing, but you can control anything you want. So there's 11 pages of, of settings here. Uh, from setting your presser foot height to the amount of pressure you have to um, uh, going through here, uh, needle left or center position. Again, I don't need to dig into all these. It's, it, it would just, I could spend hours explaining all the benefits and, and wonderful features on these, but you know, auto pivoting and um, other, other amazing features. So we can even set the amount of light because one of the nicest uh, features on these machines is the amount of lighting it has. So depending on how dark your room is, there's a full bank. In fact, I'm going to Quickly turn this up, camera girl, this you'll hate me for this because it, it's a bit hard to capture all the light on screen, but we can have a nice bright sewing area or come right down to even a minimal sort of sewing area. And if you're sometimes that just makes it a whole lot easier for you to see what you're actually doing. You can also adjust the screen brightness, the um, loads of settings there. You can go to eco mode, you've got a screensaver option on this, uh, there's different languages on the screen. Um, this is where it tells you your service count and, and uh, stitching, a number of stitches the machine's done. So it's a bit like an odometer on a car. And um, this machine's only done 272,000 stitches. It's practically new. We've just got it. We've been, you know, testing it and running all sorts of things over the last couple of days. Um, and let's just go through here. This is all embroidery stuff now. We don't need to go through that now because uh, we're going to do that on the XE2. That's more embroidery. And then back to our Wi-Fi settings and so on and so forth. So anyway, the control panel is very good. It's very easy to use. There's a great help menu in here too. So there's a whole heap of videos. There's guides to the various apps that you can use. Um, and uh, everything you need to know about this machine is built into the, the help menu here, as, as well as, of course, a great book that's available, not to mention all the videos that we're creating. So loads of help there. And um, let's just go close that out there and let's get into the, the sewing screen. Now, what you'll notice here is um, right now I can see that the needle is, stopping, is set to stop in the down position. Uh, it's telling me to use the J foot. It's showing me the stitch that we've currently got selected. And if I was to change to a different stitch, let's just go to that stitch there. You'll see that changes here. And that's actual size of what, of what is about to be stitched. If we were to wanting to adjust the width of that stitch, you can adjust it to seven mil stitch width. Um, now you'll also notice down here, there's a black box behind these settings. And on Brother Machines, whenever you see a black box behind a particular setting, that is the factory default setting. So if you're not sure about something, it's always kind of handy to go back to that, uh, find the black box, and that's a good start point. So we've got stitch length adjustment. We've also got left and right, sh right shift on the needle. So that's the position of the needle within the, um, the zigzag um, width and also our machine tension here. So we can override the tension if we wish. Again, a lot of automation, but you are ultimately in control if you want to be. Um, now, this uh, particular uh, screen has two pages. So don't forget that if you've got a couple of arrows on the screen, that means that you've got another page to look at. And, um, and again, it's just a matter of choosing the stitch you want and away you go. Now, these are all menus here. So if we have a look, that's menu one, which is basically all your utility and standard stitches. Then you've got um, more utility stitches and moving down, there's, there's more. So that's, there's so many stitches. There's overlocking stitches and um, 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 entredeur stitches, all, so, all sorts of things. Buttonholes. Buttonholes are a big thing in, in sewing. So you've got, I think, 15 different buttonhole styles here. Plus you've got button sewing and eyelet creation and all sorts of wonderful things. You've also got the ability to sew sideways. Um, so we'll have a look at that in a few moments. Then we go into the quilting stitches. You've got tons of them. And they're all dedicated for quilting. 
and a few of the Sashiko stitches. So uh, again, there'll be videos showing you all this different functionality. But one of the things, the new things on the XJ2 is the new tapering stitch function. These are all uh, tapering stitches, which we'll have a, a, a bit of a look at in a moment. Um, moving down here, we've got our, uh, some of the automatic features, auto trimming, auto back tacking, auto foot lift, and our laser light. So uh, let's have a look at, we're just going to go back to our standard straight stitch and just to show you one of the things that is really, really cool. I'm just going to grab this piece of uh, fabric here, very standard fabric. I'm going to pop that under the, um, under the foot and put my foot down. Now, if I turn on these buttons here, this is my auto back tack and my auto trim and my foot lift. When I hit the go button, it will now give me a back tacking stitch to start. And when we come to the end of our seam, and I'm only running it slowly here, and you'll notice I'm using my start stop button. But when I hit the reverse button here, it will automatically back tack and stop and trim the thread and lift the foot and I can take my fabric out. So my seam has been stitched. That automation is great. If I do that again, and, ag and again, I'm using my automatic foot lift here. If I do that again and stop in the middle of this seam, because I've got my auto pivot on, so if I stop now, the, the needle will stop down, my foot will, will lift and I can automatically pivot. And I can just hit the start button and continue on. If I stop, it will pivot. I can pivot around. I'm not very straight because I'm not sitting in front of the machine at the moment, but when I get to the end of that, stop, and I can pivot back around. And when I'm finished with my seam, just hit the reverse button and it will lock off, trim the thread, and lift the foot for me and I can take my fabric out. So as simple as it could ever get. If I was using my foot control, it would be doing exactly the same thing. Um, but uh, it's one of the things these days is the start stop buttons are becoming increasingly popular, but you do have the option of that or the foot control. If you, um, as I said, if you chose a different stitch, it will automatically set that stitch for you. So if I go to number 24, it's telling me to use the J foot. And at this point, I could turn off my automation there, and I'm just going to run some decorative stitching down there. Or this is a, kind of like an overlocking stitch. But it sets everything for you. You don't have to think about anything. There's nothing to set at all. Just let the machine do it for you. And when we stop that, if we hit that button there, we can actually use that as a, um, a fixed stitch. Do a few of those, and it'll lock off the stitch for you. But I'm going to do a trim now. Hit the scissor button and lift the, lift the foot, or the foot lifts automatically, you can take the fabric out. Um, so let's have a look at the, I mentioned there was the sideways sewing stitching, which is kind of cool. So let's have a close look at that, number five. And you'll notice here we've got different directions. If I wanted to stitch, you might, be, you might need to stitch just a half an inch to the, in, in a direction, you know, at right angles to what you're currently sewing. We could be sewing along, and uh, you need to stitch half an inch in one direction. Just choose the sideways motion. Now, this is interesting. It says to use the end foot. So that's the first opportunity to change the foot. So I'll grab my end foot out of my machine case, storage case, which is uh, the end foot is sitting right there. And all we need to do to change the foot is we just lift the presser foot, touch the little lever at the back of the foot, take our new foot that we're going to use, and all we've got to do is just lower that foot down onto there, just make sure it's on under the, uh, the little shank there, and that's all set. So I can now take that fabric and sew sideways. I'm going to sew to the right. All I've got to do is hit the start button now. And there we go, we're actually sewing in a sideways direction, which is pretty cool. If I wanted to come back down on an angle, I could Click that button there and I can come back down at a 45 degree angle. So with the sideways stitching function, that allows you to use some of the amazing decorative stitches that are built into the machine. And a menu I haven't shown you yet is this one here, Character Decorative Stitch. And this just opens up a whole new um, platform of stitches. So we've got all these new menus which we haven't had a look at yet. So you've got alphabets and monograms. Um, but the one I particularly love to play with is these guys here, some of the big stitches. Now, you can see here, we've got multiple pages here. And I know that because I can just scroll down and keep going through and finding some of these incredibly beautiful stitches. 
So if I wanted that stitch there, for instance, that's the size of it. It's certainly bigger than seven millimeters, which is the standard zigzag width. Let's have a look at what that would look like. And it tells me I need to use the end foot. So we just hit that button and you'll see the fabric will actually move in a sideways direction. And it's sewing, it's continuing that pattern on if I hit this little, the fix stitch button here, the lock stitch button, it will actually complete one complete segment of that pattern and then stop for me. And if we just do a trim and take that out, you'll see that it's, um, it does beautiful decorative stitching and there's so many decorative stitches built in there and you can program them together. You, some of them will, as I said, get right out to over 30 millimeters in, uh, in width, which is amazing. And uh, I'm not quite sure. I think there's, uh, well, there's hundreds of, hundreds of decorative stitches in there. Okay, let's take a look at what's next. Okay, one of the uh, really cool new features on the Stellaire XJ2 is the tapering functionality. So being able to taper not only a satin stitch or an applique stitch, but also some of your decorative stitches. And in order to get to the tapering function, you're just in your utility menu, go down to tapering, and we have uh, 20 different stitches. Now, I'll just do a practical example here just quickly. One that I um, particularly like was taking this little uh, ladder stitch here go into the taper mode and it's really simple. I want to do a beautiful tapered or mitered corner with this um, particular stitch. So tapering is on to the, I'll go to the start and I'm going to choose the 45 degree start point there. And you can see it changes what you can see on screen here. And I'm going to go to the end and I'm going to set the same taper at the end. So you can see we've tapered at the start and finish. And if I practically just do a little example of that, let's just click OK to that and put our foot down, let's go start stitching. So it's going to taper at the start. And when I get to uh, as long as I want it to be, I just simply hit the uh, reverse button and it will actually then taper at the other end. Or I could set a particular number of patterns to be stitched, but I'm, I'm gonna be happy with that. So we'll just hit the reverse button there and now it will taper back to the, um, the end point. It'll stop, it will pivot, so the needle will stay down, the foot will pivot, and then I can simply turn this around and I'm not kind of sitting in front of it, but hopefully that'll be pretty close. And let's just start now. It will now taper that corner, or mitre that corner if you like. And when we get far enough there, we'll just hit the reverse button. It will now taper or mitre back into that corner. And you've, you can set various angles for this, so and you can have different angles at the start and finish. And if I just square that up a bit, foot down, let's continue on, you'll get the general idea here. But um, if you're a decorative sewer, you like using decorative stitches, the tapering function is fantastic. Easy, easy to use and will broaden your horizon. So I'll just hit this button here. That will finish it off for us. And so there's really no guesswork. Let's just do a trim there, take that out and show you what we've got. Foot will come up. And so we've easily tapered or mitered those two corners there. Really, really simple functionality. So really love that. Um, and that is also, if you've got uh, the previous model Stellaire, uh, the upgrade will actually add that. In fact, all the features we're showing you on the Stellaire range on the XJ2 and the XE2 will be available in the upgrade for the Stellaire's uh, XA, XJ1 and XE1. The only difference is the needle plate doesn't change. So that's about, that's it. Uh, the the um, upgrade will bring you up to speed uh, if you have one of the older models. Okay, button holes are important on any machine and the Stellaire XJ2 has uh, fantastic one-step automatic button holes, 15 of them in fact. So you'll have a button hole for every occasion and it works very simply. Uh, there's your buttonhole foot, the A foot, and it has the ability for you to pop the button into the back of the foot. So we just take whatever button we're about to use, pop it in there like that, and I'll just release the foot that is currently on there. The end foot will take that off, and we'll pop the A foot under there. It is just a matter of positioning it under the, the shank of the foot, or the, the, uh, the presser foot shank rather, lowering the foot down and just positioning it so it clips in. It starts at the bottom of the buttonhole, so we will just lift that foot, pop our fabric under the foot. We have the button in the back. There's a little lever that pulls down on the side here. We just pull that down 
and uh, you'll see that button has gone red. We need to choose a buttonhole, so we go to our buttonhole menu, and um, we'll just choose a standard buttonhole for the moment, so let's go with number seven, and that's all we need to do. I just hit the start button, and a buttonhole will produce itself. Now, I'll turn the speed up. I had it right down low from the previous. Let it do its own thing. It will stitch one side. It will sew the bar of the other side. It will come down and sew the bottom bar and sew back up. And it will be a perfect size buttonhole for the button we have just used. Hit the scissor button. That will trim the thread for you. We can take that out. Take the button out of the back of the foot. And there is our perfect buttonhole done. It doesn't get much easier than that, does it? So, and you've got a good range of buttonholes there, as well as some automatic darning functions, eyelet functions, and also button sewing. So, um, look, loads of stitches. I could sit here for hours going through all the different stitch functionality that is available on this machine, and it's just quite prolific, to be honest. Um, but, you know, other, other things you've got here, you've got an auto function. In fact, if we go back to our standard utility stitch, just get out of there. You've got an auto, automatic free motion quilting setting. So when you add that, it will tell you to put the O foot on. It will set everything for you to do free motion if that's what you like doing. You've got mirror imaging and, um, and that will allow you to mirror most stitches. If a stitch doesn't allow you to do it, it won't let you. It won't let you get into any trouble. That's one of the nice things about modern machines is they usually block out things that you shouldn't be doing. So you can't make too many mistakes. Um, if you like, if you're into twin needling, same thing. When you choose twin needle, it will only let you choose stitches that will be suitable for twin needle operation. And then there's also programming where you can design different um, or take different elements of a, of a particular stitch pattern and add it to others. Um, and a repeat function. Now, one other stitch selection option that I want to show you uh, that I think sets itself um, aside from everything is the My Custom Stitch option. So if we uh, go into Character Decorative Stitching, we have this option down here. And this allows you to actually create your own stitches completely from scratch. So if you have an idea for creating a little monogram, tiny little monogram or, or, or a, a French knot stitch that's quite unique to you, uh, entre stitches, whatever you want to do, wherever you click on this little screen and hit set, and you can either touch it with your um, cursor or you can use the arrow buttons. But if I hit set and then come down to there and hit set and back up to there and hit set and then come back up to that corner and hit set, Wherever I hit set, I'm putting a needle point. Now, I'm not creating any particular stitch other than I'm just showing you the functionality of this and um, how wherever you push the button, it will set a stitch. So I've created this weird looking stitch, but you know what, let's have a look and see what it's going to look like. If I hit the test button, it will show me that stitch down here. And if I, heaven forbid, it might, might stitch out all right. Let's, let's find out. Let's hit that button and see what it actually looks like. So I've just created my own unique stitch. Um, and if you, again, if you're a creative person and you like that idea, this is a fun, fun thing to do. And if you've created your own My Custom Stitch, you can save it back to a USB and you can share it with other Stellar customers. It's, it's a really cool feature. Let's hit that stop button, let's do a trim. And um, I'm sure there's not a great use for that stitch, but you can see what I'm explaining there. Whatever you set into this, it will actually create that stitch for you and you can repeat that function very, very easily. So I love that feature and, and that's been on a Brother Machines for years and years and years and years. So kudos to Brother there. Um, if we want to go back to our main menu, let's go back to Utility Stitch. Uh, we're back into our main menu, ready to do whatever it is we may want to do. Now, of course, when it comes to practical sewing and just that everyday stuff, nothing quite beats the new laser guidance system on the Stellaire XJ2. And what that means is if I have, let's just say, a, a simple straight stitch function, or any, any stitch really, it doesn't matter, I've got a button down here that turns on a laser guide. And if you have a look on the fabric, we now have a red laser line that's actually um, projected out in front of the machine, or out in front of the presser foot. And what I can see on screen at the same time is a blue line, that's my stitching line, and there's my laser line. So for example, if I wanted to use the laser line as a guide to give me a quarter inch seam or a whatever size seam you want, or um, stitching point, I can actually set that. So right now, if I set my laser guide to, um, I'm gonna go to 6.5 uh, millimeters, and I'm gonna go back to my left hand needle position, I now have exactly 6.5 millimeters between my needle 
and my laser guide system. So if I, if I was using that on the edge of the fabric, for instance, I could put that down there. And as long as I'm running that laser down the edge of the fabric there, I'm going to get a perfect seam width. So really cool. You could use it also to be perfectly in line with your, with your needle. So if you were stitching in the ditch, for instance, rather than having to rely on looking at your needle point, if I actually set, I might go back to my center position and set my laser on screen to be exactly on my needle stitching, that means that I'm using that, la that uh, laser as a, a definition for where my needle line or my stitching line is going to be. So you can set it to pretty much any position relative to the needle that you like. And um, right out to, oh, I think it's a maximum of, um, goes right out past 10 mil. Well, I'm gonna tell you, right out to 15 mil left, uh, or right or left of the actual needle position. So it's just a terrific guideline system. And um, that's all part of the, the standard machine on the Stellaire. One of the, uh, one of the really Again, there's lots of cool features, but one of the really super cool features on the Stellaire XJ2 is the uh, the Move It dual feed foot. Now I've attached that to the machine, and you can see it's uh, it's it's kind of got its own um, its own little well, not kind of, it has got its own little motor driving the system. And basically, what it is is it's a almost like a tractor wheel that actually feeds the fabric beautifully from the top. So if you can imagine. Uh, a walking foot or an even feed foot, but, but even better because the feeding system is so constant and pure. And that is driven by its own motor in this little device at the back here. If we run a uh, straight stitch down there, you'll see what I mean. I'm gonna go nice and slow so you can watch what happens, but you'll be able to see this tractor wheel just in behind the needle. And that is giving you the perfect feeding of both top and bottom. And what's really unique about it is that's controllable so you can, tell it to feed more or less of the, uh, on, the, on the top of the fabric. Um, and it's just a sensational piece of equipment, very much taken out of the industrial sector uh, in, the, in the clothing industry. So having that, that dual feed is amazing. If you're a quilter, if you do all sorts of different types of applications, you will love it. That is standard on the Stellaire XJ2 and um, a, a really another great, great feature from Brother. So, uh, all the normal things you would expect on a high quality, high end sewing machine are here. The so many stitches, but you know, fundamentally the biggest thing about the Stellaire XJ2 machine is the quality of the stitch, the, the quietness of its operation, the smoothness of its operation and the ease of use. All those things just give you a beautiful sewing experience. And then of course, throw in embroidery as well. And you've got, you've got everything you'll ever need. Um, Brother make a great product. Their warranty is always exceptional and um, their reliability is second to none. And of course, uh, with all the support we have available for, for teaching you and, and uh, supporting you on, on your journey with this machine, that, that just is ongoing forever. So anyway, that's a bit about the Stellaire XJ2. I hope you found it um, uh, helpful. Remember, if you wanna have a look at the embroidery functions, watch the Stellaire XE2 video. It's the same machine, it just doesn't have the sewing functionality that the XJ2 does. It's an embroidery only machine. So um, great products. Hope you found it enjoyable. Cheers for now.